Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking about functional training. It's a name that has made the rounds of YouTube Fitness for a few years now, but every single time it has a resurgence on the platform, I cannot help but think how stupid the entire thing is. Because in my opinion, there is no such thing as functional training. The entire thing is a myth in reality, and the people who train for function for the most part and who think they're part of the functional crew are for the most part deluded. But worse than that, their delusion is hurting them and also hurting fitness in general. And this is why I think this video is very important to make. So for the most part, this is going to serve as a catharsis of sorts. If you are also the type that is suspicious towards functional training, and if you're someone who trains functionally, I think, I think it's also going to open your eyes greatly because I think that you've fallen for a meme. So let us first and foremost establish what functional training is. Functional training for the most part is people that are going to make certain motions appear in their program so as to get better at them, motions that appear in real life. So in truth, people who train for function are trying to get better at life. They want to be able to become a more capable human. That is the sales pitch that these people are going to tell you at first uh, glance. If you look at their program and their training, this is what is going to be the most apparent. So this is, in a sense, the surface level of functional training. And if we were to just stop there, there's really nothing wrong with that. If anything, you could even say that this is the best mode of training because wouldn't you want your training to make you a better human, a fitter human? Isn't that what we are all trying to do? So isn't it at the end of the day that every type of training is functional training and that functional training is therefore the ultimate, the, the ultimate way to approach training? Well, you'll see that it's going to actually be the exact opposite by the end of this video. So that is the functional training crew, functional bros, train to get functional at something and that something is like that is a very broad goal and we're going to see that this is part of the problem because we are already facing an issue here you are going to replicate motions that are present in real life but that could be really anything so what life are we talking about because if we're talking about the average person well the average person replicates motions in their everyday life that for the most part are made of I don't know, lifting a bag or maybe plugging in a computer, opening the doors of their cars, opening the fridge. All of that is, is motions that we all do on a daily basis. So wouldn't that mean that functional training should, for the most part, be comprised of these motions, right? Shouldn't we have, for example, someone, a functional trainer, who is going to do, uh, I don't know, five sets of 20 reps of four cliffs or something like moving the printer or whatever things you do at your job? That would be extremely functional because these are the motions that you do the most and that get you paid. But you don't see that, of course. It would be ridiculous. Instead, what you'll see is motions that outside of a specific job, for the most part, a human could be doing. So, for example, a knee flexion, I guess, or the ability to stand up from the ground or the ability to crawl on the ground. All of these are the bread and butter of people who train for function. This already is a little bit, as I said, suspicious because how often do you crawl on the ground in real life? Is that really an application of motion that is going to be useful for you on a daily basis? Likewise, if you're just an average schmuck and you climb a rope, for example, which is extremely functional, apparently, how functional is that? How often do you climb a rope in your everyday life? Almost never. So we see that we are already moving from something general to something more primal in the sense that people who train for function don't really try to replicate motions they do in their everyday life. They replicate motions that they believe to be important for humans to possess. And this is already a key difference because, again, most functional bros will never actually be able to tell you that. So this explains a ton of things because, again, something like a one leg squat is apparently deemed super functional by people. But for someone like me, for example, I would have a tough time applying that to my everyday life. I don't know how you function in everyday life, but for me, I don't have certain bouts of flamingo disease where one of my legs just cramps up and I have to stand on one for hours at a time. So the ability to add a knee flexion on top of that is completely useless. So 
we are already pretty much getting to the point where functional training isn't really about function anymore. Rather, it's about developing functions that have nothing to do with your everyday life, but that you decide are important and therefore you want to possess. It's actually an argument I've heard a ton about functional training channels, but I'll tell you that humans need to possess a full range of motion. All of these motions might not be useful in everyday life, but just because we don't use them in everyday life doesn't mean that they are not useful. And I actually agree with that 100%. Now we get into the discussion of what is functional and what isn't, because we just spoke about functional training as a whole and what it could mean. But now we have to look at the objective functional. Okay, what is functional? Again, we just saw that based on the lifestyle that you have, this could mean many things. And therefore, if you're going to tell me that a lift is functional, you have to be able to prove to me that if you apply it to a certain lifestyle or job, it is going to be useful. And let us then look at the lift that I see brought up the most often when the entire discussion around function is actually carried on. What is the lift that we're going to talk about? I know that 100% of you already know it. We are going to be talking about pull-ups because apparently pull-ups are the most functional lift in existence, which is hilarious because in reality, pull-ups are some of the least functional motions that a human can develop. And I'm going to prove it to you, all right? Using the same logic that I applied to a described functional training. We all agree again that for something to be functional, this means that you have to be able to apply it in your everyday life, for the most part, at least to some degree. This must mean, therefore, that if you're going to tell me if pull-ups are functional, this motion must be of use in your everyday life as well. All right. What type of human utilizes a vertical pulling motion on a daily basis in their life or their jobs? When is the last time you climbed up a wall? using a pull-up motion? When is the last time you actually got to use that strength you've developed on pull-ups to carry your body weight up a wall or up anything in reality? Never. Beyond the gym, or you do it, again, as a hobby, you never do it. And don't bring up firefighters and policemen because they themselves barely do that shit. They might do it once or twice a year outside of training. For the most part, it's a skill on top of that that once you possess, you possess. So... I'm not saying that a firefighter, for example, will not be able to use pull-ups to, for example, climb up a building. I'm sure they do it. But if you look at the application of that skill, how many pull-ups do you need to be able to do to climb into a building? One, which means that by the time a firefighter can do one pull-up effectively, he's done. He doesn't need to keep training pull-ups. And yet, what is the requirement for firefighters? I think in France, it's 20 pull-ups. What is the need for that? You're going to do reps on the building, on the window before you climb in and you save the kids from the fire? I don't think that's true. And on top of that, again, if we're talking about function, function is specific. Look at the way most people do pull-ups. They do pull-ups from underneath the bar with their head lined up with the bar. That's not, that's not how you climb up. Have you ever climbed up a wall? You can't melt into the wall to climb it. Your body and your hips and your center of gravity is behind you. So in reality, you have to climb with your hands like this and you have to get above the wall. You can't just pull from the back. Most of the time when you climb up a wall, you climb with only arms. So for all of the people who do their pull-ups properly with their lats and their back, you're not doing it functionally at all. You should do your pull-ups off of a wall if you really think that pull-ups are so functional. So that's, I think, already a solid debunking of the idea that pull-ups are functional. But I'm not done. Again, look at this idea. Pull-ups are functional. Okay, most of the population will never use pull-ups. The few members of the armed force or the firefighters that use pull-ups will use it once, and that's it. What does it also mean? It means that any type of progressive overload on the pull-up or any modification of the movement outside of its use in real life is therefore non-functional, meaning that the second you slap a belt onto you and you do reps with plates hanging off of you, that means the lift is not functional anymore because when in real life are you going to do it? And again, if you tell me that, oh, you're just waiting the movement to be better at the application in real life, yes, but again, a pull-up is not a climbing motion. It's a different thing. So if you really want to be functional, go down, 
look at the window that's like, at like the height of your arms, weight yourself, and then do your pull-ups off of that. You know why no one does it? It's because it's super uncomfortable, because it's going to wrap around your belly, and on top of that, it doesn't do much for muscle building, because it's mostly a skill. In truth, if we were to find a motion, a calisthenic motion, that is going to be comparable to something functional in real life, this would make muscle ups the best option. Muscle ups cheated where you start with one arm and then the other. Because if you look at a kid climb up a wall or even an adult, most people, that's how they climb up a wall. They're not very gracious. They just swing their body weight onto one side of the body and they roll onto the wall. That's the way it's done. That's the functional way to climb up a wall. So based on that logic, pull-ups are simply not functional. And the worst part is that I don't care how much you shriek at this information. If you're a casting athlete, I'm sure you don't like hearing that. You can't deny it. Because again, function needs to be derivative of everyday life motion. So look at the average human. How many times does the average human do a vertical pull? Zero. So that means that pull-ups are not functional. How many times does an average human do a knee flexion or a hip hinge, a reverse hip hinge? 10 times when you stand up a chair, when you pick up something from the ground. What does that mean? Well, if we're going to talk about function, this means that squats and deadlifts are more functional. They are more functional lifts for the average person. And even beyond that, and this one I know is going to make some people mad, but I'm going to say it because it's funny. Curls are more functional than pull-ups. Because how many times a day do you do this or this? How many times do you do an elbow flexion or an elbow extension? A ton when you pick up things. Which means also that curls are more functional than pull-ups. So right now, the entire idea of functional fitness ain't looking too good. Because from what I see, you're basically going to just train like a bodybuilder. You're going to do your squats or deadlifts. You're going to do your isolation movements, your pull-ups, but they're not functional. So the idea, again, that a lift is functional without actually taking a, a good look at what it means also explains the reason why most lifts that are called functional are not functional. And actually, it's almost a perfect one-to-one. -one. All of the lifts that people like just the functional bros look at and say, oh, that's useless in real life, they tend to be the most important lifts in real life. Look at front raises. That's a super important motion to have. You raise your arm a ton in real life. Whereas all of that super advanced calisthenic stuff, the pistol shrimp squats, all of that stuff with like the single arm, single leg raises, all of that stuff, it looks very cool, don't get me wrong, but it's simply not functional. So that's the first thing. Something that must absolutely be said. Now, let's move on to the next idea because if we are to accept that what I just said is true, this, at the first, uh, at first glance, also means that progression on the pull-up and these motions is not super important because, again, once you can do it once, you are pretty much good for life. But beyond that, it also means that the people that say that are, in a sense, lying to themselves, but also to other people. And it's something I've seen a ton with functional training and something that I've realized as well. The people that espouse that nonsense deep down know that what they're doing is not functional. Or I hope they do, because they should see that it has no application in their everyday life. So why exactly do they do it? Well, for the most part, they just do it to get better at it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there's something wrong with trying to lie about it. So for example, if you're a calisthenic bro and you do pull-ups at the park, you're not training to become more functional. You're training to become better at pull-ups, which technically is functional, but the only function of it is becoming better at the thing you're already doing. So it's the snake that bites its own tail. But it's that willingness and that attempt to try to present what you do as beyond that that has always irked me in a sense. And I think that I personally understand that because I think that most people who do functional, with big quotation marks, lifts, do it simply to get better at, say, lifts, so as I just said, but deep down also do that because they want to LARP as athletes. What do I mean by that? Well, the functional training crew will let you know that they are better than you. If you're a bodybuilder or a powerlifter, they're better than you. Why? Because they're training for life. They're training for, they're training for the application, bro. They're training to be ready. Like whenever the situation is going to arise, if there is a fire tomorrow, they'll be ready. They'll be able to climb up. As if I'm not going to be able to fucking climb up. I can do pull-ups too. But they really want you to know that, that this is their bread and butter. And this is something that, in my opinion, 
is a total sign of a LARPer, someone who is inventing a life in their own heads, someone who is trying to pretend to be something that they are not. And in that category, I have to give the golden star to the commando training crew. There is a specific substract of the functional training crew that trains for action. So they, they train for the day where they're finally going to be able to like see fire. These guys train as if they were still like in Nam, as if they were still in the jungles of Vietnam and they had to like escape the Viet Cong or something. I see a ton of them on Instagram, especially. They're funny because they're harmless, but I also see a ton of delusion in them because plot twist, you're not a soldier. Like doing all of these beer crawling movements and having a heavy vest on your on your body and doing all of these motions with chains, like it's very badass, of course, but it's it's not war. You understand that, right? You're not Rambo. All of that is just LARPing. If tomorrow I saw a grown ass man pick up a stick into the in the forest and start going pew 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 with it as if it were a gun, I would think the guy has a problem. When I see you replicating motions that I see like in training motivation for the army, for example, I also think you have a problem because you're not a Marines, you're not in the reserves. You're just some guy somewhere who for some reason tries to live his fantasies as a soldier via the means of functional training. It's fairly bizarre. The people in the army do functional training, but you know what? They don't call it functional training. Look at, for example, the Green Beret, La Légion Étrangère in France. They do a ton of shit like this. They climb up ropes, they jump into pools, but all of that is because it's part of survival skills. It toughens them up. They themselves would tell you that it's almost useless. I was watching a documentary about it in Guyana, in the jungle, and the guy who was training them was saying, yeah, like we tell them it's for application and to become better in the jungle, but in reality, they'll never actually face that. We're just making them do stuff so tough so that we can actually turn them into better, stronger men. It's sort of the same thing with functional training. I understand that it toughens you up. It makes you better. But where is the function in that? Where is the applicability in that? For the most part, it's not there. It's what I call the Joko Willink effect. I don't know if you know who he is. He is actually a military man who is training functionally. It's his big thing. But for him, it's something I can forgive because he actually saw action. He actually was fighting for his country. But what about all of the fanboys that this guy creates? that are all going to train functionally, bro, and do kettlebell swings and ATG squats because he said so. For him, it makes sense, but for you, it doesn't because the application is simply not there. And that is actually the real problem with functional training. No one stops to ask, functional to do what? What exactly are you planning to do with all of that function that you're building? If you have the balls to admit that it's just because you find it fun, okay, but the majority of functional bros are not like that. They'll tell you that it's actually very useful and applicable in real life. So again, I think that this is absolutely idiotic because anyone who is going to train to apply to real life doesn't call it functional training. I just told you that with like the soldiers, but the other group that does it and never calls it that is also the athletes. Athletes do very functional training styles because they need it for their sport. But I personally have never met one that called it functional training. They call it training. Or if you are meeting someone who's like a pondexter, sport-specific training, but never functional. And that is because they have an actual end goal. You will notice that the people jerking off and just, again, LARPing, who have no real direction in their training, call it functional which is, again, antithetical because for it to be functional, there needs to be a function and there needs to be an application. But there is no application. Again, you're just some guy in a park crawling around. You're just creeping people. It's not bad per se, but if you think you're going to use that skill, you simply won't. You might be developing a human ability that is nice to have, but you'll never actually use it. Again, you're most likely someone who works in an office, and if that's the case, you would be better off, I don't know, training your lower back, for example, bettering your posture. And if you're someone who is a blue-collar worker, you already know that what you do in your job is functional enough. So what you'll do outside of that is, for the most part, orthodox strength training to be able to avoid injuries and get stronger overall. You will do none of that bodyweight calisthenic things that nowadays pass as functional training. But I think it's very important that this gets pointed out and, in a sense, attacked because it gives athletic-type training a terrible rep. And it also, in a sense, 
misguides people because people training like athlete, athletes, for the most part, train like complete morons. The best example is Athlinex. Have you ever stopped for a second and thought about that guy and about his marketing practices? Athlinex. What does that mean exactly? Well, take the athlete out of it because it's not important. That's not the important part. The important part is the lean. That's what sells. That's how Jeff Cavalier is able to attract people because he's never been athletic on camera. That guy is not very athletic. You put him on a soccer field, he'll get fucked up. Why? He doesn't train for a specific sport. So what does he train for exactly? He trained to be lean and to be aesthetic because that's his selling point, which is also, in a sense, funny because he trains people for sports. So that also means that maybe he's not the most qualified to do that. But that's a different discussion altogether. The reason why I wanted to point it out is because he is, in the sense, the godfather of that type of athletic functional training. But he's also widely regarded by strength coaches and people who actually coach athletes as a hack, as someone who doesn't know what he's doing. And that is because, in truth, he is also the godfather of functional training. He is the type of guy that is going to try and sell people movements and motions that are super applicable in real life, and it's going to completely revolutionize the way your existence functions. But at the end of the day, it does no such thing because it simply doesn't have the power to do so. If you want it to function again, first and foremost, you would have to pick a goal. Function for the sake of function is nothing crazy. It's nothing special. It's what most people in the gym do. And yet, people who train for function and who are functional really want you to know that what they're doing is above that. But the issue is that the understanding that they have of the things they pursue when they pursue them is limited, to say the least. And the best way to actually face that truth and understand what I'm trying to say is to look at the global understanding of what being an athlete is. If you ask a normie, hey, what's an athlete? Nine times out of 10, they're going to give you appearance-based criteria to describe what is essentially normally a performance type sport. Meaning that if someone starts describing like abs and like veins in the biceps and like your defined chest to tell you what an athlete is supposed to be, you can disregard what they have to say. They're idiots because an athlete is not a look. There is no such thing as an athletic look. The only people who say that again are normies because in their heads, what is in an athletic look? Go on the mainstream media. What is an athletic look? It's going to be some guy with a six pack. Always, 100% of the time. That's their understanding of athleticism. You ready for this one? I have a scoop for you. Having a six pack has absolutely nothing to do with being athletic. Nothing. I have a full six pack. I have an amazing six pack. I'm less athletic than a lot of people who look like garbage compared to me. I can barely run. I can barely jump. You know why? It's because aesthetics and function, although they develop conjunctly, are separated in essence. And that is incredibly important to get. Normies don't get that shit. For a normie, and that's actually always a fun time, if you plug them like two heavyweight boxers and you're like, who is the strongest? They'll look at their body and they'll pick whoever is more jacked. I don't know if you remember, I think it was Ruiz against Joshua. Ruiz is like a fat Mexican dude and Joshua looks like a bodybuilder. Riz destroyed him in their first one uh, in their first bout in one-on-one. No one bet on him because he was a fat ass. But this means nothing. Function is not correlated with the way you look. That should be immediately obvious. And on top of that, it's reductive because the percentage of real athletes with abs is the minority. The majority of athletes don't have don't have abs and are certainly not 8% body fat. Most athletes have body fat on their frame. This is also something that normies don't get and that the functional training crew also doesn't get because for the most part, people who train like athletes don't train to perform like athletes, they train to look like athletes. And if that's not the stupidest thing you've ever heard in your life, I don't know what is. Imagine if I told you, hey, if you want to run as fast as Usain Bolt, you have to look like him. And if you can get the same physique, you will be just as fast. You told me an age you have bonked your noggin and you have 50 IQ. What is going on? Well, what is going on is I just use the same logic these people apply. We'll tell you, hey, if you replicate the function of an athlete, you'll just, you look, you will look, sorry, I lose my words, you will look just like the athlete. That, of course, is just 
as stupid, but it's a very pervasive lie and one that needs to die. So I offer to you what I call the sumo test. The sumo test is a way to know if the person you're talking about understands athleticism or not. Show them a sumo wrestler performing a bout, for example, and tell them, hey, is that person an athlete? Are they athletic? And if they tell you no, you know that you are dealing with a complete moron because sumo wrestlers are athletes and are incredibly athletic. It's, in a sense, a way to scan people who only judge via the visual. Bodybuilding is only judged via the visual because it's an aesthetic-based sport. It's an art. Any type of performance sport, so in reality just a sport, has to be judged through function. Something that, again, functional training fails to do times and times again, and it's something that we are going to get back at. But I wanted to insist on that because you rarely see functional training bros with high percent body fats. Even calisthenic athletes tend to have low percent body fat. Why? It's functional to their sport. It's because they can perform better. But look at what I just said. Functional for their sport. It's not functional overall because there is no such thing as an exercise or lift that is functional overall. It simply doesn't exist. So we are halfway through the video and I think I already proved to you that functional training doesn't exist. Now that has been established, we can move on to my next point. And my next point is that I think that the reason why functional training became so prevalent is because it, in a sense, replaced something in people's heads. I think that people who espouse functional training do so because there are people who want to train for looks, as I already explained previously, but they don't want to admit it to themselves because there is a big stigma around just training for looks. Apparently, it's feminine, it's gay, it's vain, etc. It's a bad thing to train for looks. It makes you a terrible person. So people are going to actually fall for that type of social pressure, that peer pressure, and they're going to try to find a way out because people will always find a way to fulfill their desires even via a, in a sense, hidden way. They'll always, they'll always get their way without having to actually face the negative connotations or stigmas that surround their desires. And so, I think that a large portion of people who train for function are in reality closeted bodybuilders who did not want to admit that they train for looks. Open your eyes and see. Look at the amount of calisthenic athletes that if you actually dig for a second, you realize are only for it because they want to look better. This means that they're not calisthenic athletes. Because to be an athlete, you have to be performance obsessed. They are bodyweight bodybuilders. That's a better way to describe these people. Of course, they would like that because in the common imagination and conscience of people of the lifting community, it is always going to be better to train for function because, again, aesthetics by themselves are seen as not as noble in a sense. It's not as noble to just pursue them. So you have a ton of people who are going to be obsessed with getting big, but they'll do it always in a fashion as if to be able to say that they are not even trying. So that they can just say, oh, I, yes, I look good, but it's not my main pursuit. I just got it as a byproduct. Again, they're trying to look like an athlete, which, as I explained, is completely idiotic. And this also explains, and it's a tangent, but it's an interesting one. The reason why you have so many people who think that the most chad, the most alpha thing in the world to do is to have a muscular physique without trying. We have entered the culture of the non-tryhards, meaning that a guy who kills himself in the gym, who is going to put all of the efforts of the, in the world and will look great, will be called a gym cell. But someone who gets the same results with the same amount of hours, but by doing a sport or something functional, will be regarded as a hero. Why? How does that make sense? Well, I think it makes sense again because we have that culture that denies and rejects bodybuilding altogether, but still wants the end result. People want to look good, but they never actually want to work for it, or at least they don't want to actually have to admit it. And I think that I had a quote for that. And it's a quote that I just invented in a sense because it's not the exact quote. But you know how Ronnie Coleman used to say, everyone wants to be a bodybuilder, but not everyone wants to lift some heavy ass weight. I think we can modify that quote to fit the functional training craze. Everyone wants to look like a bodybuilder, but not everyone wants to admit to be a bodybuilder. I think that this fits the scenario and the situation extremely well. So 
You have all of these people, which also gives birth to a culture that in a sense ends up not being able to understand the world around them and the ability to get big. For example, how many times have you seen someone, an athlete saying, oh, I don't train with weights or I don't lift weights. And the guy looks jacked and you're like, oh my God, are you like a super chad? Like, are you an, an alpha specimen? Then you dig into it and you see a video of the motherfucker doing like dumbbell exercise and cable exercise. And you're like, what the fuck? And then someone asks him and, and, and asks him like, well, we saw you lifting weights. So why did you lie? And the guy is like, well, it doesn't count. Why doesn't it count? Well, it's because the guy thinks that lifting weights means grunting and picking up a heavy barbell one time. This is the meathead stereotype that we have to deal with nowadays where people are so afraid of becoming a bodybuilder that they'll do everything they can to not be associated with that culture because they see it as disgust disgusting and toxic. And I don't disagree with them. The pro bodybuilding side of things is toxic. So they'll distance, distantiate themselves from it. It's also where all of these normies saying stuff like, I don't want to get buff or I don't want to get too muscly. I just want to be toned come from. It's in a sense, the deep desire to look good, but without looking good. Is it any wonder why these people never actually achieve a good physique? They're desperately trying to catch the bus, but they don't want to sprint after it. And speaking about sprints, by the way, sprints aren't functional either. I don't know where that idea started. Sprints are only functional for one thing, sprints. They make you faster at sprints. That's it. Unless you tell me that sprints are really important in real life. When is the last time you sprinted? To catch your bus, maybe? Are you trying to escape cheetahs and bears on a daily basis? Again, the only way to make all of these lifts, the barrel crawl, the sprint, the, the rope climb functional is to either do them in everyday life, you don't, so they're not functional, or to say that they're functional because they restore a function we used to possess and therefore it's something you want to reclaim as a, like a primal gift. But again, this means that they're not functional, they're like archaeologically functional in a sense. So we can call these people archaeological trainers because they're trying to restore something that is not useful right now. That is a different discussion. And again, this was a tangent. Now, let us move on and let me find my line because I just completely confused myself. Yes, as I was saying, you have a ton of people now who want to get big without actually trying. Another tangent, because fuck it, I knew a ton of guys like this, especially when I was playing football. A ton of guys in my team are big and jacked. And when you ask them, hey, what do you do? They would like to say things like, oh, I don't lift weights. Yeah, it's just natural, bro. And you know what the truth was? These fuckers train more than everyone else. You know why they lied? Because it's cool. Because it's cool to be the guy that's massive and who isn't even trying because it makes you look like a genetic beast. But they're all trying. All of these people that you think, oh, he's 17 and built like a superhero and without trying, it's not fair. He is trying. He's been training since he was 13, five hours a week or six hours a week. And he's putting in the work. But he understands that he can crush your spirit if he pretends to just be born like this. So he does. All of that participates in the same effort. People who want to be big without actually trying or at least by pretending to not be trying. And that is the general sense of shame that surrounds aesthetics. Sadly, it is tough to actually walk away from that and to actually modify the minds of people. For now, we are stuck in that mode where pursuing aesthetics is bad, but looking aesthetic, aesthetic is good. It also means, as I said, that the type of people who are going to give you advice about aesthetics or the people who actually pursue aesthetics are lost for the most part. And that also includes the functional training crew, which for the most part are people who are pretending to be functional pretending to train for function, but their end goal is in reality aesthetics. Function is just an excuse. It's also the reason why I said functional training doesn't exist because people who train for function don't even exist themselves for the most part. Now, it goes beyond that, actually. Something that I realized as well is that it's also a psychological pass in a sense, meaning that it is seen as non-productive to train for bodybuilding. Because it's vain, of course, you're only trying to develop your muscles. And therefore, it is not something that is regarded positively in society because you're supposed to always be productive. You're supposed to always do something for something else. And this has led, by the way, to the, common the, the, the current state of YouTube fitness. Have you ever stopped a second to think about the place we call home? YouTube fitness. What is fitness exactly? Can you tell me? Because for the most part, fitness is, in my opinion, just every single type of exercising just put together. 
So why don't we see swimmers making fitness channels? Why don't we see runners making fitness channels? People who make fitness channels are for the most part lifters. So it should be called YouTube lifters. Why don't we call it that? Well, it's because we fall, we fell for the same trap. We fell for the melting pot. It's everything at once, but it really isn't. We all do the same fucking thing with slight differences of goals. The difference between a bodybuilder and a powerlifter is not that much. The difference is our goals, which modifies the method. But the means are very similar, and even some of the methods and progressions are similar. What differentiates us is what we are chasing. So, why this distinction? Why do we pretend to be so different? Well, it's because, again, it's that idea of doing everything. And now we're getting into marketing ideas for the most part, but when you preach fitness, you grab everyone at once. You grab the guy who wants to get stronger, more mobile, who wants to look bigger. All of these are going to flock towards the name fitness. But in truth, you and I, we don't do fitness. I don't know what you do, but I certainly don't do fitness. I do bodybuilding. Fitness is what the old ladies in the park next to my house do every morning. They do their fucking Tai Chi and they feed the pigeons. That's fitness. I bodybuild. I don't give a fuck about fitness. And don't lie, you don't give a fuck either. I see too many people saying stuff like, oh, it's... For mobility and old age, yeah, yeah, that's very nice and all. But we all know that the first reason why we do this is to look more aesthetic. If you don't, you might be an hybrid of a, of a performer, athlete, and a bodybuilder. But if your main pursuit is not to look juicy and jacked and stacked, you're not a bodybuilder. Most people do this shit for aesthetic sake only, and that's perfectly fine. So the appellation YouTube fitness is a little bit silly in my opinion. Now... The reason for this appellation, in particular, is puzzling, as I said, but explainable. Now, there is a question that follows. If we are to admit that bodybuilding, for example, is not a worthy pursuit because it doesn't produce anything, it's vain, it doesn't do anything, etc. The question I have in return is, why do we need a reason? Who exactly stipulated that for me to have a pursuit in life, whatever pursuit, I have to be able to justify it via a productive mean? Do you do that every day in your life? When you do something, do you always think, hmm, how can I make it functional? I don't think so, because it would be hell. Even as someone like me who is a workhorse, I don't think like this, because I'm not a robot. And I'm sure you're not a robot either. You do a ton of shit that's completely useless. You do it to rest or because it's fun. So why is training the one aspect of life where apparently we have to be functional? It has to be related to function or else go fuck yourself. Well, I think that it's just, again, a psychological misconstruction of the idea of training. I think that we should be training for what we want without trying to justify it to ourselves. Again, this endless need to justify it. When people ask you, why do you want to get big? Just answer, because. Because it's fun, because it's my dream, because it looks good. Why do you have to always explain to them A plus B? Why does it have to be logical? I'm not saying that looking big, bigger and better is not logical, but what these people want is they want you to like produce like a, a pamphlet where you're going to explain to them like A plus B again, why it has benefits. The benefit is there. It's staring you in the face. The benefit is because I want to fucking do it and that's it. And I actually urge functional bros to stop deluding themselves and just to admit it to themselves as well. You like functional training because it's fun. You don't do it because it makes you a better, fitter human. You're lying to yourself. And I think, again, that all of that is because of the society around us. Every time we put an hour in something, we have to justify it. As if I was an ant, part of the colony, and I spent an hour to go eat like a, a morsel of food somewhere, and I have to explain to the queen why I was actually slacking up on the job. Well, guess what? I'm not on the fucking clock. I'm a bodybuilder because it's something that I like to do. It's a terrible, laborious mindset, but this laborious mindset has people do monkey bars shirtless instead of just bodybuilding because, well, apparently it's functional, it's productive, so it's justified. So, these people espouse subpar means of hypertrophy and training for bodybuilding because apparently it's not as stigmatized, which also means that they'll never be able to actually accomplish their goal. It is mind-boggling, but it's something that many people are stuck into. And, and this is the last nail in the coffin for the entire functional training crew and the, the, the very concept of functional training, I think that this also means and proves that it's not just that functional training doesn't exist and that people who train for function don't exist. 
It's also that functional training is the least functional type of training there is. Let me explain to you why. I think that many people lift, lift weights, for example, and train because it takes us away from our, from our everyday life. So for example, for me, I'm a desk jockey. I spend 10 hours a day programming things. I don't, I'm on a computer all the time. So when I can lift, it's a breath of fresh air. It's the best part of my day. Why? Because I think that there is an animal in us that used to be in the motion, that used to be using his body all the time. And nowadays, this animal is mostly dormant because we all work with our brains for the most part. And so we itch for that ability to actually spend that energy. This is why we are in the gym. This means that we all pursue the same thing in the sense. It's that release of energy. So in a sense, this means that what we call functional training works the exact same way. It's an escape of sorts. But the very principle and concept of escape means that you are not going to do what you do in your everyday job. So it's not functional to your everyday motions, meaning that functional training that serves again as escapism by default must be dysfunctional, unfunctional, because if it were functional, it would just be a replica of your everyday life. It's why I told you that this productivist mindset is idiotic, because if you actually were true to it, you know what functional training would be? It would be doing another day's worth of, of job, of work, of labor, just as a pretend action, just to get better for it. So let's say you're someone who I don't know, you organize files, you're paid for it eight, eight, eight hours a day. Functional training would be coming home and doing it again for eight hours to be really good at it. Do you do that? No. What do you do? You go into the woods, you run, you do push-ups on rocks, you toss rocks. What is this? It's dysfunctional training. It's the exact opposite of what you do in everyday life. Why? Because it is the exact thing that you desire the most. It's a break away from your everyday reality. And that is the reason why, again, functional training and functional at all. Because if it were functional, you wouldn't want to actually do it. So that is for my second point. Now, let us move on to the third and last point. The reason why this entire thing I just exposed to you is so hurtful and damaging to fitness and especially bodybuilding. That is because this mindset has poisoned fitness in the sense that it has led people to believe that again, to be doing something worthwhile, you have to do everything. It's a very childish mindset actually, and one that also leads to dogmatism. Functional training is exactly that. It's, exa it's very dogmatic because it attempts to do everything. The issue with functional training is that if you go to a functional trainer, they'll tell you, oh yeah, I can increase your strength, your speed, your stamina, your hypertrophy. I can make you better in bed. Everything. Like They're like genies, these guys. But the issue is that they're wrong because there is no such thing as a program that is going to make you stronger and bigger or at least not in equal proportions and not one at the detriment of the other. Meaning that if you have a program that is going to make you very strong and it works, it's at the detriment of hypertrophy, always. And that is the truth. And again, it should be logical. If I told you, hey, I'm going to put you like on a curriculum to make you better at both biology and physics, that's possible. You could increase both skills at the same time. But if I told you, hey, that very same cu curriculum makes you better at both equally with no sacrifice of one another. And it also will trump a curriculum that only focuses on physics. Again, if you have two brain cells to rub together, you'll tell me that's not possible. Because, of course, focusing on one thing tends to produce the best results. Humans are specialized. We're a specialized species. We have chosen one thing and we do that only one thing. And this is what makes geniuses. This is what, again, produces results you will notice that functional trainers, for the most part, preach that excellence, that ability to be good at everything, but for the most part, they themselves are mediocre at everything. So if it didn't work for them, how exactly will it work for you? Understand also that athletes and people who actually apply that type of training to their everyday practice don't do that. For example, a boxer will never try to get as big as he can because it will take away from his boxing. That is the lesson. The man that actually chases two rabbits will catch neither. It's the same logic here, but functional trainers are too busy chasing all of the rabbits to realize that they are going hungry. And this created all of the nonsense of CrossFit, power building, all of these things that in reality are trying to justify bodybuilding by the existence of a, of a non-functional function. Look at CrossFit. 
look at the amount of people who do CrossFit. Do they do CrossFit to get better at CrossFit? No, they do it to, to, to look better because that's what they saw. They saw CrossFitters were jacked. What exactly do they train when they do CrossFit? They train the ability to get better at CrossFit. So they pursue hypertrophy and bodybuilding via, again, a mean that is not straight because, again, of the stigma, and then they don't get what they wanted. It's the same with power building. Most power builders look like shit. Why? Because they can't admit to themselves that they are bodybuilders. So they had to slap that function into the mix of powerlifting, bro, but they're not even fucking powerlifters either because they don't compete. So now they're shitty powerlifters and shitty bodybuilders. Great. You have accomplished absolutely nothing. This is the issue with that mindset. And it goes even beyond that. Because if we're going to stay in the rank of the lexical definition of functional training, something that I already told you doesn't exist. I told you that functional lifts don't exist. But what does it mean? If no lift is functional, this also means by default that all lifts are functional. And that's absolutely true. Meaning that bodybuilding lifts, like curls, for example, are functional. Their function, their function, I don't know where that is coming from, their function is hypertrophy. Because every movement that the human body is capable of doing has a function, every single one of them. So in truth, functional training doesn't exist because any single person that trains is doing functional training. They're doing functional training for something that they have decided. But these stupidest people out there are the people who do functional training without a goal. You're not doing functional training. I am. My training is more functional than some schmuck who does movements just for the sake of being functional. I hope that it's clear. For me, it's crystal fucking clear. But I don't understand why people still call their training functional. You're not doing functional training. Just stop it. Oof. And on top of that, if we're going to get into the nitty gritty, understand that resistance training was one of the first type of functional training. The function again was hypertrophy. It was invented to isolate the growth portion of the lift. It's people who saw that what they were doing in a farm, for example, was growing their muscles and they thought, hmm, I want to do only that. Again, that's a functional mindset. How do I do it? Well, you create lifts that are, in a sense, biased towards hypertrophy. That's how it happened. But functional training nowadays does the exact, same, the exact opposite. We're going backwards. We're going back into methods that are very general. Again, we're going back to fitness. It's the reason why I told you I don't like fitness. We're specialists. Let's call each other what we are. You're a bodybuilder. Start calling yourself that. Stop lying to yourself. By doing this, again, we are broad. We are enlarging, broadening. Is that even a word? We are making the entire panorama of fitness broader, making it harder for people to navigate it because now people want to sell you a, fit, uh, a fits-all suit, but the issue is that it fits no one's. So it's, in a sense, a regression. Functional training is a regression because we used to like pinpoint the function, and functional training tries to do everything at once, but it can't, so it fails entirely. And it's very ironical, and this is going to be my final point, because most functional channels are bodybuilding channels in these guys. Have you noticed that? Most of these dudes and most good functional channels tend to be guys who actually are bodybuilding via, in a sense, an orthodox means. But if you think about it, the main function of what they're doing has always been to look better. So why don't they call themselves bodybuilding channels? Well, it's because, again, it's highly stigmatized. They would rather call themselves functional. And now we're going to cite names. Names of people that I actually respect, but I know that you guys also know them, so it's going to help you understand what I'm talking about. Look, for example, at the Bioneer, a guy I respect greatly with a good physique. He's a functional trainer. He gives people advice on how to train functionally. Now, let me ask you the million dollar question. If the Bioneer wasn't buff, do you think people would take his advice? If he was built like a goblin with a pot belly and stick for arms, do you think people would take his advice? The answer is no. People listen to him because he's jacked, he has a six-pack, he has big arms, he has a big chest and a big back. This is the truth. What does it tell you? That people who are attracted by functional training are for the most part people who are attracted by aesthetics and the very people who preach functional training for the most part got from their functional training mostly aesthetics as well, which begs the question, 
was it maybe the thing that they pursued in the first place? And they found a way to market it to be more appealing to people who see bodybuilding and think, oh, bodybuilding, I don't want to inject syringes into my asshole, so I'm going to do functional training. But the goal at the end and the function pursued is, drum roll, hypertrophy. So there are in reality bodybuilding channels. Also, love the Bioneer to death and his British accent, but he makes how to look like eggs videos. He made a video on how to have lats like Bruce Lee, how to look like Baki. These are fucking bodybuilding videos. The goal of the video and the function of the video is aesthetics. It's not functional, but the issue is that, again, when you desperately try to attain aesthetics and looks via function only without admitting to yourself that's what you want, you tend to produce subpar programs. The pioneer makes subpar bodybuilding programs. He might make good functional training programs, but functional training doesn't exist, and the vast majority of people who follow him want to look better. So they would be better off doing resistance training instead of all of this nonsense that is half and half. It's like half and half milk. Okay, it makes you more functional, I guess. You're more athletic, but you're not a fucking athlete. And it's something I forgot to say, but it's very interesting too. Stop trying to relieve your high school days. Your high school days are over. You didn't make the varsity team back then. You were a bench warmer. You did nothing on the court. It's over, bro. Like, move on now. I see so many middle-aged guys who are like this. They're the, I could have made the NBA, but I hurt my knee type. The type that are trying to relive these glory days. It's done. It's over. You're not an athlete. Unless you actually perform and you actually compete in a sport, you're not an athlete. And all of the functional training in the world is not going to make up for that. I'm not saying the pioneer is like that, but I am saying that the people who follow him, follow him are like this. So, again, an exercise of honesty. Be true to yourself. What is your real pursuit? Your real pursuit if, is aesthetics. Okay, then train for bodybuilding and stop following subpar methods. Another mention I want to make is Ido Portal. For the people who don't know who he is, he is a guy who like does primal motions and he moves like a monkey and he does rings and calisthenics. The guy is great, don't get me wrong, but he's also a complete moron. And the reason why he's a complete moron is because he has a deeply rooted disdain and disgust for bodybuilding. And I've heard him say a million times that training for looks is bad. But if you look at him, 99% of his videos is him shirtless, like fucking Fabio, whoever the name of that guy is with the long hair. Is there any irony in this? Do you see the hypocrisy maybe? The guy's entire marketing scheme and the people who follow him, all of that is based on looks and aesthetics, and it's always the same with these functional bros. Every single one of them that makes it to the top looks good. Isn't that the sign that maybe, just maybe, it's because function is bogus, and that's never what they were actually trying to sell to people? It blows my mind that we don't understand that, and I don't want to harp on it too much. So we're going to, we're going to actually move on to the conclusion, a conclusion that is just going to be a completely gratuitous attack on calisthenic athletes, because... Calisthenic athletes have piggybacked on the functional training thing so hard, even though the way they train is not functional. Again, I proved you that pull-ups are not functional. All of the shit that you do that is very impressive is not functional. Dips are not functional. Your one-leg squats are not functional. And therefore, this also means that it's not natural. Stop it. The next time I hear a calisthenic athlete say that these movements are natural, I will actually hit them with a shovel. I actually have one right there. Every motion of the human body is natural. You dim weight. It's if the human body can do it, it's a natural motion. A deadlift is a natural motion. You bend at the hips and you pick up something. A knee flexion is a natural motion. A curl is a natural motion. All of that are just as functional one to the other because they're all things that we can do. And also, no, calisthenic doesn't build real muscle. I saw so many people say that. And it breaks my heart because that's what normies think. You know normies who separate between fake muscles and real muscles? As if there was such a thing as fake muscles. All resistance training creates muscles. They're all real muscles. And also, by the way, because fuck you, all type of training is resistance training. So you all, in a sense, train like bodybuilders. Why don't you say that instead of saying functional training? Calisthenics is resistance training. It has never been functional. So it's something that also needs to be said. Too many calisthenic bros are actually in it for looks. Just admit it, admit it to yourself, get out of the closet. 
you bodybuild and if you're someone who wants just the performance, then go ahead, call yourself a calisthenic athlete because that's what you actually do. But let us, for the love of God, once and for all, put an end to this entire functional training meme. There is no such thing as functional training. And if there is, every single person that picks up a weight or train is doing functional training. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.